You came to LA this week to peek into the future. But if all you want is next generation, you're in the wrong place. Because what you'll see from Nintendo is not just next. Instead, it's what's absolutely new. What we're unveiling is the next leap in gaming to a place where playing is no longer just about looks, it's about the feel. Where it's no longer confined to just a few, it's about everyone. And most of all, the next leap is not about what you see, because what you see is not always what you get. The next leap is about playing, because playing is believing. Thank you.
Two years ago at E3, we pulled the curtain back on Nintendo DS, and many said, huh? Last year at E3, we uncaged Nintendogs, and many asked, really? Then nine months ago at the Tokyo Game Show, we revealed how we from Nintendo will change game control forever. And a lot of people said, well, we'll see. Fair enough, because today you will see, and tomorrow you'll start to feel. Welcome to the next leap in gaming and Nintendo's 2006 media briefing, where we have where we have answers to some questions, but deliberately not to all. Because our purpose this week is not to fill your left brain with information, but to jolt your right brain with inspiration. Let me start with a couple of questions for you. Do you know anyone who's never watched TV, never seen a movie, never read a book, of course not. So let me ask you one more question. Do you know someone, maybe even in your own family, who's never played a video game? I bet you do. How can this be? If we want to consider ourselves a true mass medium, if we want to grow as an industry, this has to change. And today, Change begins here with a new console, just as it already has with a new handheld. To let me explain, let me begin with what I'm guessing are a few of the main questions on your mind. First, the system. Why did you make it so different? And by the way, how much will it cost and when can I get it? Oh yeah. And what's the backstory about that name? And finally, what about the games and which developers are on board with us? As many of you know, Nintendo's way is to challenge conventional thinking, not just for the sake of doing things differently, but to do things better. The graveyard of any industry is filled with the headstones of companies who decided to keep doing things the same old way, playing only on the margin, making things just a little bit better. That strategy works for a while, but ultimately it's fatal. Over the years, our industry has come to accept progress simply by what's on the screen. I know many of you were in our audience back in 1996 when Super Mario 64 jumped to life in true 3D. And you said, man, that looks great. But that leap to a revolutionary form of gaming wasn't really about the looks. Even then, it was about the feel. Moving your character and your viewpoint independently in any direction all in real time. And the memory of that moment was also the starting point for Wii. In the same way that Super Mario 64 changed everything, we asked, how do we make games that feel entirely new all over again? This week, every one of you will feel our answer. As for date and price, we believe it's in our best interest to keep the details private for just a while longer. But for now, let me just restate that we will give you more fun for less money, and you'll be playing Wii in the fourth quarter of 2006. Okay, next, the name. First, we want to thank everyone who wrote good things about it the day you heard it. Both of you. But seriously, the response didn't surprise us at all. At first, every distinctive name sounds strange. 
Did you love Lexus the first time you heard it? How about Ikea? How about Google? Change is good. We from Nintendo means just what it sounds like. We. It's the sound of inclusion, the sound of every gamer you know and every new gamer who's going to join us. It's a giant leap for gaming for everyone around the world. It's the sound of the future. As for the last question, what about the third parties? Well, we'll be talking about them in detail in just a few minutes and showing you much more on the show floor tomorrow. For now, let me just say that on behalf of the names you love from Nintendo and our partners, we can't wait to show you what's on the way. I think you may have recognized that last game. It's called The Legend of Zelda. But this one is different. It is by far the best Zelda game we've ever made. And it's also the most beautiful game Nintendo has ever made. But just as importantly, it's breaking precedent. Because this is the first Zelda game that will be right there on launch day alongside a new Nintendo system. How good is that? I know you'll make that judgment for yourself, but there's no better time for a first look than right now. So please welcome Nate and Bill from Nintendo of America to host the world premiere of The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess, playing on the new Wii. Thank you, Reggie. Good morning, everyone. Are you ready? Nate and I are very happy and honored to be able to show all of you exactly how you're going to be playing Zelda this year on Wii. 
Very basic control is going to be very familiar to anyone who's ever played a Zelda game. Your movement is handled with the analog stick on the nunchuck. Link's arsenal of items is going to be mapped to the plus control pad on the Wii remote. And Zelda's patented targeting system will be handled using the Z button, also on the nunchuck in the left hand. But the Wii version of Twilight Princess takes advantage, of course, of the unique controller. It provides new, unique, and intuitive feel to the gameplay. And that's what makes it great. The first thing you'll notice on screen in the Wii version is the presence of a fairy. This fairy indicates where you'll be pointing with the Wii Remote's pointer. You'll use this on a very basic level to access all of your menu screens, select your items. It's very intuitive, it's very nice, it's very easy to use, and I think you're all going to like it. But, you know, menus aren't that exciting, so why don't we get into some of the more intense battles? Your basic sword swings are handled using the B button on the bottom of the Wii Remote. But of course, not all of your enemies are going to be within reach. Some of them you're going to have to get at from a distance. And that's where Link's bow comes in handy. Like all distance weapons, the bow is going to be aimed using the pointer on the Wii Remote. Now, as Nate's showing us here, as you aim, there's a circle in the center of the screen. Within that circle, your targeting cursor moves independently. Outside it, the camera moves with it. The beauty of this control scheme is that it's intuitive. You know, there's no more inverted shooting, just, you know, just point and shoot. And it adds realism to the game. It feels like you're actually aiming with a bow. It's not some controller. Now, with the bow, the Wii Remote also adds depth of sound. And this is where we can finally start to unveil some of the secrets that still remain about the controller. Built into the Wii Remote is a speaker. You'll hear the bowstring draw taut. You'll hear the flip of the arrow. And then you'll hear that sound travel from your hand to the TV, where that arrow will plunge into the chest of your enemy. That's depth of sound that no other controller and no other system can offer. And I know that other developers already have a whole lot of very unique ideas about how to take advantage of this feature. Now here we have Nate showing us some more intense battle. And as I mentioned, basic sword swing is on the B button. But you're also going to be using the motion sensing capabilities of the Wii Remote. A quick jab with the Wii Remote. And Link does a shield shove, knocking your enemy silly. And the great thing is you feel the impact of that shove with the built-in rumble feature. Now watch, oh, Nate's already taken care of him, so we'll do that later. <laughs> with the boomerang, you'll also be using the pointer to aim. So what we're going to show you here is some basic Zelda puzzle solving. It's the same type of thing that you've come to experience in Zelda games, the same type of thing you've come to expect. Twilight Princess is going to feature a great deal of it. And of course, the classic Zelda chime is also going to be heard on the speaker on the Wii Remote. Now what we're showing you here today is just a very simple, stripped down version of a single dungeon. A tiny little area of a single dungeon and probably what's going to be one of the greatest Zelda games ever. So if Nate can take care of these guys with his bow here really quickly. Oh, Nate. Oh, you're the only person in America who's played this game and you still can't do this? Come on. <laughs> One other thing you can do is you can pick up crates with the A button on the Wii Remote, and when you want to throw them at your enemy, you just give a quick chuck with the nunchuck. So like I've mentioned, the nunchuck, obviously, again, has built-in motion sensing capability, independent of the Wii Remote. You've got two different controllers, two different motion sensors, and that allows for a lot of freedom with unique control styles. You'll notice here, that Link's iron boots also make a return. But these boots aren't just going to weigh you down this time around. If you watch here, they're actually going to lift you up. Magnets can be fun. Who knew? So again, the E3 version is just a very compact dungeon. It's also been toned down difficulty-wise because we want to make sure that all of you out there who have never played a Zelda game, because I'm sure there's plenty of you, can make it to the end. But now that we've talked about the basics, we'll kind of let Nate run through, show us some more intense battles, and, uh, and then take you to the end and see what else we have to show you. I 
again. Quick little jab for the shield. Quick rotation for the spin attack, you'll notice there. Also on the nunchuck. There's a little more puzzle solving. So again, quick rotation with the nunchuck for the spin attack. And then you just stab down with the nunchuck. And Link will do his down thrust, finishing your enemies off. And let me tell you, that feels really good. <laughs> Mm. I love that. <laughs> now, because you're all big Zelda fans out there, we don't want to spoil everything for you. So we're not going to show you what waits behind that door, but I'm sure you all know it's got to be something horrible. But don't worry, even if you're not a Zelda fan and you, you can't quite handle all that action, also on the show floor you're going to be able to kick back Lakeside and enjoy some nice, relaxing fishing. But uh, you're all going to have to bring your own beer. so. We'll see you on the show floor tomorrow. Thank you very much. This Zelda, of course, is the first ever to feature unique freehand control. But tens of millions of Nintendo GameCube owners around the world will also be playing this game on their systems. That's because here in the Americas, Nintendo will launch two different versions, one for GameCube and another for Wii, on the same day our new console launches. Even as technology advances, one thing will never change. The name of the game is still games. How many times have you heard Nintendo say it? But actions speak louder than words, so let's look at some games. Samus is back, and Metroid Prime 3, Corruption. You'll not only do more running and gunning, but both the Wii Remote and Nunchuck controllers, each with its own motion sensor, will pump up your heart rate like never before. It's both the new Metroid and the most intuitive first-person shooter ever. And Mario is back, too. His brand new adventure for Wii is called Super Mario Galaxy. And with freehand control, Mr. Miyamoto has given Mario moves he's never had before. Swing your hand to bat away objects, grab onto shooting stars with the pointer, swim through space, and skip along the stratosphere. We said this new system represents the next leap in gaming. But can it truly be new if all the names are the same? Of course not. That's why we're hard at work on new franchises to expand our portfolio. And we like to give you three early previews this morning. First up is Excite Truck. Most of you recognize the pedigree. But what you won't recognize is the method of, of control. Remember how you always tilted the controller like handlebars when you played Excite Bike? Well, now you're holding the steering wheel of a big damn truck. And the terrain deforms beneath you in real time. This feels like driving. Next, isn't it just fun to bash things? In Project Hammer, swing the controller and the bad guys get nailed. But what happens if the bad guy is Mother Nature? Survive or not, it's your call in disaster, day of crisis. Come feel the panic and bring the catastrophe under your control. Obviously, game creation inside Nintendo is important. But just as important is what's coming from our great third-party partners around the world. Independent developers have been hard at work in Japan. And although we won't be spending a lot of time today detailing their projects, we did want to underscore a couple of excellent examples. When Sega saw the new control system, they said, it's time to put Sonic back into gear. Finally, the Speedster is totally under your control. 
Look up, the mothership is about to land, and Square Enix is arriving with an exclusive iteration of its legendary series with Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Yet again, we will take what is familiar and reinvent it. And Hallmark franchises are also on the way from this side of the Pacific. You may be a veteran all-pro playing EA's Madden Football, but with freehand control reinventing everything from the snap to the drop back to the pass to the run after the catch, you'll feel like a lively rookie all over again. And grinders know it's all about balance. And with Activision's Tony Hawk, we will transmit that reality right to the palms of your hands. And Rayman's traveled to many platforms for Ubisoft over the last 10 years. But if you think you know Rayman, wait until you see him with we. And THQ's SpongeBob also gets the makeover he's always longed for with freehand control. There is great stuff on the way. And while we're not going to specify a launch number this morning, you'll be playing 27 different Wii games tomorrow on the show floor. And seeing even more on video. And remember, that 27 number includes none of the titles which will be available with our virtual console. Until you get the controller in your hand, you're nowhere near feeling what this is all about. Today, all we can do is show you examples. So let's bring another one to life right here on this stage. I'd like to introduce Xavier Poix and Roman Campos Aurelia from Ubisoft in France to take you through the new franchise exclusive, Red Steel. Good morning, everyone. My name is Xavier Poix. I'm the studio director of Ubisoft in Paris, where Red Steel is being developed. And joining me on stage is our lead game designer, Roman Campos Oriola. We are really very excited to be here today to debut Ubisoft's Nintendo Wii exclusive launch title, Red Steel. Red Steel is the first person action game set in both USA and Japan, in which the player will have to learn to master both modern firearms and the katana sword, taking, of course, full advantage of the Wii controller. Roman, as you can see, is using the nunchuck controller in his left hand to move, and he's able to look around and to fire his gun with the other controller simply by pressing the trigger button. With the Wii controller, you can handle the gun the way you want, and at the first time, simply by moving your hand, like in real life. So if you want to play it gangsta style, you can. And it's the same to open a door. As you have seen earlier, there is no button to push. Do it like you do at home. Just turn your hand or push the door very hard. For the very first time in a game, you will really feel like both your hands have entered the screen. You are in the game. As you can see through the demo, <laughs> you should at least. <laughs> uh, there are many, many graphical details. Yeah, it comes back. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if we were thought that you have many graphical details from destructible environments. Explosions, real-time physics, soft bodies, which really help to create an immersive experience for the player. So this is a little warm-up with enemies before we go into more details. So now let's play Pachinko. The game will feature a variety of handguns and semi-automatic weapons. Shotgun, of course, as you will see. And now we'll be more, speaking more precisely about IA in the game. So once again, destructible environments 
and enemies, surprisingly in a game, really care for themselves. That means that depending on their level of trust, they will hide themselves, they will go for cover, and they will try to attack you from the back and try, to, of course, to control the situation. That will help to keep the action fast-paced. We also have a system of AI that we can call a clan system. That means that when the enemies have a leader, they will rely on him. So if he has been disarmed by the player, or if he has been, has been killed, sorry, uh, then they will act differently. So now, Roman is going to show us a feature of the game, which is called the freeze shot. This feature will be very useful in tricky situations. So simply by holding a button, the player will be able to freeze time, and then will be able to tag weak points on enemies. You then will have to choose between killing those enemies or making them submit to you. In this scene, you will be able to see the free shots. Once again, destructive environment everywhere in the game. The one woman will tag the weak points, disarming or killing. So as you have seen, he kill a man and then uh, the boss is submitting to you then you can decide on what you want to do. Sit down, for instance, like this. Just simply by moving your left hand to indicate what you want him to do. We have God Rays. Oh. Little surprise. Collateral damage on the bus. Morman will now have to take on his next enemy. And for that, he will have to draw his sword. So once again, the moves you have to make for the sword fighting are very intuitive. You can block with your left hand and slash with your right hand in any direction. That means that you will have dozens of combinations to do. This will be very easy to handle thanks to the Wii controller, but of course very hard to master. Thanks a lot for letting us introduce you to Red Steel, even if we had some small problems. But everybody will be able to play it tomorrow at the Nintendo booth. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Xavier and Roman, for the demonstration. We want to switch gears now from what's going to be hot tomorrow to what's hot right now, Nintendo DS. Please welcome our Senior Vice President of Marketing and Corporate Communications, George Harrison. George. What we've given you today is a promise. No matter who you are, gamer, developer, publisher, retailer, we will make things better. Well, what makes us think that Nintendo can deliver? Well, above all, one thing, Nintendo DS. Our long-held strategy of disruption became reality when we launched DS 18 months ago. Since then, true gamers have bought into true hardware disruption and software disruption. It's a different approach to portable play. Now, we're not going to spend too much time today drilling down on the sales numbers but a little clarity is in order. The DS launched at the end of 2004, and it did very well. Then the PSP arrived. 
and some of you questioned if we were up to the challenge. But once all the early adopters cleared away, it became clean, clear that a matter of games, it's always a matter of games as it always is. And what's revived the portable market is what only the DS delivered. Things players had never seen before. Nintendogs, the brain games, seamless portable Wi-Fi play. The result is this. In terms of actual sell-through to players, the DS has sold more than 16 million units worldwide since its launch just 18 months ago. Now, independent sources put total worldwide PSP sell-through to consumers at millions less. Millions less. But even more important is our growing momentum. First came Nintendogs. More than 6 million copies were sold to players around the world in just 13 months. Then we launched Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection, the most accessible game network ever created for dedicated game play. Easy and free is a pretty persuasive offer. And the player response proves it. 1.3 million discrete Wi-Fi Connection users so far, totaling over 40 million gameplay sessions. And all this in less than half a year. But maybe the strongest wave of all has just reached our shores. Three weeks ago, the first brain game launched here in North America. This, after the three versions in Japan, sold through to more than five million players, over a third of them over the age of 35. Now, it's too soon to tell if our ultimate success will match Japan's. But we do know that our sales of brain age over the first three weeks, now totaling about 120,000 units, is even more than what we saw in Japan. And we expect to leverage that same appeal with a wider spectrum of games that we're calling touch generations. Beyond the brain games, upcoming games like Clubhouse Games and Sudoku Gridmaster will further our reach to include people who've never felt comfortable with games before. For DS, we're simply not letting up. And in just a few weeks, the newest handheld sensation arrives here in America. Nintendo DS Lite. It's smaller, lighter, and brighter than the original. And if the Japan experience is any teacher, it will be even more popular than the original. In only a week, you'll be playing an all new Mario game, which is the very picture of old school. The environments, the characters, and motions look familiar, but with new spinning blue shells, and the ability for two players to pit Mario against Luigi wirelessly, this is a brand new Mario game, which will appeal to brand new players. The Pokemon are coming too. In Pokemon Blue Mystery Dungeon for the DS, and a companion Red Mystery Dungeon for the Game Boy, you don't play with the Pokemon, you are the Pokemon. These games, which have already sold through 1.4 million copies in just six months in Japan, arrive here on September 18th. Now, other Hall of Fame Nintendo names are also on the way, including Yoshi, <laughs> Star Fox, and Diddy Kong. And, if, uh, and I know that if you're a Final Fantasy fan here in the West, there's always been something missing in your life. Final Fantasy III will prepare to be fulfilled. The legendary title is coming to America on the DS, complete with a compelling storyline, but made even better with improved 3D graphics. And one more legend is also going global. Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam has him recruiting the best downhill skaters from around the world. But you can also connect directly to the best Hawk players around the world. And thanks to the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection, you can chat on voice over IP at the same time. Perhaps best of all, DS is also getting its own exclusive Zelda title, The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Picking up where Wind Waker left off, you'll now use your DS stylus to direct sailing, sword play, and even the path of your boomerang. The DS is set to soar to the next level. In all, there will be more than 100 new games from DS from now until the end of the year. Take a look.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Satoru Iwata. Thank you and good morning. When I became Nintendo president, we decided on a new goal for our company. Expanding the total number of people who play games. In order to do this, we needed to target not only current gamers, but two different types of consumers. Those who once played, but who had lost interest, and even those who had never played before. How would we do this? The industry has always tried to improve in the same direction with games that are more gorgeous and more complex. But in order to approach labs or former gamers and non-gamers, these types of games cannot serve our purpose. The logical solution is to reinvent the relationship between player and game, the game controller interface. We believe this approach can appeal to a much broader audience but also excite core gamers. This is important because core gamers always represent our most important audience. Our first implementation was Nintendo DS. Like many disruptive innovations, at first, it confused some people. But these people began to understand when they started to pet their puppies with a stylus and talk to them through the microphone. Next in Japan, we launched the first of the brain games. They have already been played by millions of people who never tried a video game before. Many people in our industry thought these consumers were impossible to reach. But now, the trend is spreading to the Western world. So, how do we continue this strategy with we? One hand control with the Wii remote is just like, like, just like the touch screen of DS. It breaks down a barrier to non-gamers and lapsed gamers. For anyone, it is comfortable. In addition, 
Most lapsed gamers have wonderful memories of games they used to play. The virtual console aspect of Wii will bring them together again. And the virtual console will also act as a living laboratory for a simple, intuitive game. Using the creative approach with the Wii Remote control and the business model of the virtual console, maybe a game like Tetris can be feasible once again. In the past 20 years, as game systems improved in functionality, there were also downsides. Among, those, among these, the startup time before gameplay begins is growing longer and longer. I have been planning, developing, and playing games for a long time, and I still love all of this. But these days, I am busier, busier than ever. And if I have to wait 30 seconds or 40 seconds or more for a game to load, Often, I get frustrated, and sometimes I just cannot wait. And now that I know I can instantly stop or start playing my DS by just closing or opening the top, I think I am spoiled. Maybe this has happened to you, too. If serious gamers find these delays frustrating, how can we ever expect the mass market to show more patience than we do? Unless we change, we can never increase the gameplay population. The Wii console will also help solve this problem. It can power up virtual console games and applications like our Opera web browser saved to flash ROM, almost as fast as telephone or television, in just a few seconds. And let me describe one more hardware feature. No game console, no matter how powerful, serves any purposes when it is turned off. So, we designed a machine to provide owners a variety of services, even when it seems like it is turned off. We will become the system that never sleeps. Using a design called We Connect 24, the console automatically enters standby mode without the fan running but still operating key functions and using about the same power of a miniature light bulb. Importantly, this means the Wii console can be constantly connected to the internet. For you hardcore gamers, this means developers can push a new weapon or vehicle or level to you even while you sleep. For beginning gamers, just starting with something like Animal Crossing, anytime the console is in standby, they may return to find that a friend has visited their village and left a message or a gift. And other developers will configure their games so that players will receive the game elements or information that the designer wishes, and programmers won't need to write a single line of code. Networking software is included in the hardware. And developers can decide to add these functions at any time. What we are aiming for is a system that is new every day. Then, finally, the most difficult job is to reach people who have never played before. 
to upload them, we need to remove several walls. New controllers and the virtual consoles are important, but most important is software that these people will really want to play. These games would allow a core gamers and non-gamers to happily and immediately compete against each other. What kind of game can do that? Among the examples you will play tomorrow is Wii Sports. This is a combination which will include tennis, golf, and baseball in one package. It will be available on launch day. Beginning players will find control with the Wii Remote intuitive and appealing. Serious gamers will find it a surprising way to attempt something they already done many times before. Expanding the game audience with Wii means increasing, increasing the number of people in any household who are involved with games. Today, there are people who play and people who do not. We will help destroy that wall between them. Regardless of age, gender, and game experience, anyone can instantly understand we. And we can provide anyone with fresh, new experiences. Every day, there is something new. For everyone, every day. This is our answer. Thank you very much. Right now, there are 3,000 of you watching here in the audience and a lot more online. And we'd like nothing better to invite you all up on stage to play. While we can't do that for everyone, we can make that happen for one person. As you know, we've been running an online sweepstakes with our good friends at AOL to choose the first player in the world to get his or her hands on the controller. The random selection has given us three grand prize finalists, and they're all here with us today in the Kodak Theater. Mr. Miyamoto himself has chosen the winner at random, and he's put the name inside an envelope, just like it's always done up here at the Academy Awards. Now, please join me in welcoming Mr. Shigeru Miyamoto with the announcement of the final sweepstakes winner. Thank you, Reggie. <laughs> but before I pick the winner, I should explain how we will play. Tennis, anyone? Control is simple and intuitive. Even your mom can play. Just grip the Wii remote like a tennis racket. I'll show you. Let me explain in Japanese. Toss up. To serve, yeah. you just toss and serve. One swift stroke. One hand. You hit four hands. One hand. Four back hands, hand. back hands. <laughs> Robin. You can swing low to high to hit lobs. Top spin. <laughs> Twist the remote as you're swinging back for top spin, spin or back spin. Ow. Ah! <laughs> and hopefully you'll keep it in bounds. I'm pro player. I'm not quite as good as I hoped at this game. So let's see if I can find a partner who maybe is a So let's see if I can find a partner who maybe is a little bit better than I am. Then the winner is Scott Dyer. 
Scott Dyer. Scott Dyer. How about that stage? Woo! Congratulations. Oh, Congratulations. Please join Mr. Miyamoto. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I ask you to be my partner in the next game. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Where do you stand on the other side of Mr. Miyamoto? Reggie, someone, someone else is there. Why don't we, uh, Reggie? Why don't you come out? Do we have uh, anybody that we could possibly play against? Yeah, I think I could find someone to play. I think we're ready to go. <laughs> Mr. Iwata, maybe this year I can just take the names and you can kick the, so and, you uh, know. <laughs> Yes, of course. That is my job. <laughs> wow. <laughs> looks, uh, looks like we've got Mr. Iwata both here on stage and in the game. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that handsome devil? <laughs> So we've got uh, Mr. Miyamoto and his partner on the left side, and we've got Reggie and Mr. Oh. Iwata oh. on the right. <laughs> so again, toss and serve. Look at forehand, backhand. Oh! <laughs> Game point. Uh-oh. As you can see, this is a quick, shortened version of tennis. Three points and, uh, and you lose. So let's see if our... Uh, our executive team here can make a comeback. Oh, oh no. Mokai yarimasu ka? Mokai yarimasu. That was quick. Maybe, maybe we, we need, should need give a rematch. Guys another chance. Ja, kochi imasu. A little rematch? Rematch? Come on. Nice serve. Oh, nice. Oh, oh. Reggie. Good. Oh, very good. You know, I, I would good. have thought you'd have a little more power in that, Reggie. Oh. 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 <laughs> you're, you're distracting me. What is this? <laughs> oh. oh. Sorry. Here we go. Okay. It's your sir. I sense a comeback. Game. One point we made it for right players. Oh, nice. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Mr. Miyavoro, you pulled it out in the end. What a shot. <laughs> Very good. We're gonna gather in the middle. That's <laughs> messed up. What a great match. Oh. Now, of course, Scott <laughs> got his chance on stage here today. But all of you are going to be able to play tennis tomorrow on the show floor. Just uh, be sure to wear some loose clothing so you can really get into it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Let's face it. The bottom line of every E3 is simple. What's hot and what's not. Here's our take. What's hot is the feel of the game. The look is secondary. What's hot is the next leap, not just a small step. It's hot if it's disruptive. It's not if it's predictable. The future of our industry is inclusion, not exclusion. It's about the heat of emotion, not the chill of technology. We know that the future is right here. We and the DS represent the same thing, risk. Risk allows progress. We're a company that doesn't run from risk. We run to it. Change is good. We were the disruptor 20 years ago, and we still are today. DS is only the latest example. We will come next. Every year, we hope you'll walk out of our media briefing saying, yeah, these guys are the hot story of the show. But you know what? Today, we're not asking that. Of course, we hope you like what you've seen so far. 
But in reality, we also know that seeing is just an impression. Playing is believing. Thank you all. We look forward to seeing you on our show floor tomorrow.